the TensorFlow graph is a source of pride, performance, and frustration among users. How can we keep the pride and the performance, but without the frustration? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to AI Adventures, where we explore the art, science, and tools of machine learning. My name is Yufang Guo, and on this episode, we're going to check out how to smooth over some of those pain points that exist in using the TensorFlow graph. TensorFlow has been long associated with the computational graph. After all, the library is all about tensors that flow through a graph. Yet, this can be a source of great frustration for folks who are just starting out. This is mostly because everything is part of the graph, and I mean everything, from the numbers that are used to represent your models to the operations themselves. Everything is part of the graph. This can lead to various difficulties when it comes time to, say, debug your TensorFlow code, since the development model can kind of feel like, write everything perfectly and then run it. You wrote it all perfectly, right? Now, of course, programming should not operate like this. It would be great to be able to iterate on things, see partial results, and peer into the graph to be able to print out more meaningful outputs than just tensor, matmol0, shape22, dtype, float32. What does that mean? But how can you ignore the deferred execution process of the graph? This is the goal of eager mode. TensorFlow will eagerly execute your operations thus allowing you to see the results right as you're working, rather than waiting until everything is coded up and connected before you can see if anything is done right. Let's take a look at this basic example, where I'm multiplying some numbers together. When we haven't yet enabled eager mode, things work the way we are used to. Printing out a TensorFlow variable gives some informational text about the operation and the expected dimensions. But to actually execute that node, we'll need to do a bit more boilerplate code by wrapping it in a session and then running that session to pull out the values. This is just way too much code to just try to look at some numbers. Now let's try that same code, but we'll enable eager mode by adding tf.enableEagerExecution as the very first thing that is run after import TensorFlow. And we'll look at what happens. The printed results, they show exactly the value of the matrix multiplication. That's what's great about eager mode. It enables you to use TensorFlow more efficiently without losing prior functionality or the features that you're used to. So much of software development lives in the trial and error process in running some code, seeing what errors you get back, and changing that code. So the sooner you can test the code and see the errors, the more efficient and effective you can be. Thanks for watching this episode of Cloud AI Adventures. And if you enjoyed it, please like it and subscribe to get all the latest episodes right when they come out. For now, try out eager mode. See if it's right for you.